The question is, what are the consequences of ignoring multicollinearity? What exactly is multicollinearity? Multicollinearity, as you've seen this, that there is high correlation among the independent variables. Okay, so a high correlation among independent variables, it is not going to affect unbiasedness, consistency, and efficiency. It does not affect unbiasedness consistency and efficiency of OLS parameters Okay, so one of the consequences of ignoring multicollinearity is that even if you ignore multicollinearity, okay, you don't take care of that multicollinearity, you don't find the solution to this multicollinearity, still it is not going to affect unbiasedness, consistency, and efficiency of OLS parameters. So, what does it mean? In case if it does not affect, unbiasedness, in case if it does not affect consistency and in case if it does not affect efficiency, then it means that OLS estimators under the presence of multicollinearity are still blue. That is best linear and unbiased estimates. Best linear, unbiased and efficient estimates, I'm so sorry. So it is blue. So even if you have ignored multicollinearity, OLS estimates are still blue. Your Gauss-Markham theorem still holds. Now, even, even if you have ignored multicollinearity, still that does not affect that does not affect distribution of T statistics okay so that means that OLS estimates are still maximum likelihood and consistent. So it is not going to affect the distribution of T statistics. So OLS estimates are still MLE and consistent. Also, it does not affect forecasting. Okay, forecasting is not going to be significantly altered in case if we ignore multicollinearity. So forecasts. are still unbiased and confidence intervals are valid. Okay. Confidence intervals are valid. So these are the good things about multicollinearity. It does not affect unbiasedness, it does not affect consistency, it does not affect efficiency, it does not affect distribution of t-statistics, and it also does not affect forecasts, the unbiasedness of forecasts. They're still unbiased. Now, standard errors uh, now some bad things. So, standard errors errors are larger in presence of multicollinearity 
which makes T statistics lower. You remember your earlier example which I gave you, in which T statistics were low and insignificant? The same, uh, this is actually coming from the fact that the denominator of the T statistics is very large. So what are the standard errors? Standard errors are basically um, the, these variances. So what is the variance of beta 2 hat? Which is sigma square upon summation of x2 square into 1 minus r square. What is variance of beta 3 hat? This is sigma square upon summation of x3 square into 1 minus r square. And what is covariance of beta 2 hat, beta 3 hat? is basically minus sigma square r upon x2, x3 into 1 minus r square. So because r, in case if r is going to be equal to plus minus 1, so all of this, all of the denominators here, they become very, very large, okay? And if you have the large variances and you have the large covariances, then it makes T statistics lower because T statistics are your beta hat, beta hat minus beta upon the standard error or standard deviation of the beta hat. Uh, say, for example, your T statistic is beta hat minus hypothesized value of beta hat upon standard deviation of beta hat. Standard deviation of beta hat is just the root of this variance. Huh? So, in case if say r is equal to 1 or minus 1 here, so this expression, this denominator will become 0. This upon 0 will be infinite. Okay? And this is, this is, and the standard deviation of infinite is also infinite. And this is the denominator of t statistic. That infinite is the, is the is the denominator of this t statistic okay so which makes which makes t statistics very low okay you divide something by infinite becomes negligible so and it makes t statistics lower so that's the problem okay of affecting of of ignoring multicollinearity and other than that is that now supposedly if you look at this covariance formula also, if r is equal to plus minus 1, the covariance will be huge. If estimates are correlated, each coefficient is capturing part of the effect of the other variable. So you cannot separate out the effect of x2 and x3 and y. You, you can't hold x2 constant and change x3 alone because x3 being correlated with x2 will also change the result. And that's the problem.